Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now verse 9 he says, Do ye not know that, he, listen to this, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. How many of you know that? The unrighteous don't get to inherit God's kingdom. It's only the ones the, that are made righteous. And we know, of course, we know from Romans. We just studied the book of Romans recently. But in Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, we saw sin entered the world through one man, through Adam's sin. But the whole world was made righteous through another man. Who was that man? Jesus, the second Adam, he's called in the book of Corinthians, or I'm sorry, in the book of Romans. The second Adam, Jesus, came and took away our sin. He made us righteous. Now, I want to read you something just to end today's study. That This, this verse speaks volumes. I'm going to pick up with it next week, but just as the, the, the end of it. Let me read to you verses 9 to 11. It says, Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? He says, do not be deceived. You know, there's another verse that says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he's going to reap, right? Galatians. Paul here, he tells the church at Corinth, don't be deceived. He says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexual, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers. That pretty much covers, I mean, the whole church at Corinth shall inherit the kingdom of God. And listen to verse 11. And such were some of you. Could Paul say this from first-hand experience? Since he founded the church there? Sure. I mean, you, you guys got to know the context. He was the founding pastor. He's allowed to say such were some of them. He knew some of them were, 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 were adulterers. Some of them were, were fornicators. Some of them, <laughs> he's like, I know some of you guys were doing that. But listen to the rest of the verse. This is what we're going to pick up next week. I love this verse. Verse 11. You need to highlight this. I want you to mull this one over all week. So when we come back to it, this will be our springboard for next week's sermon. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Such were some of you, but you were washed. And you were sanctified. And you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the Spirit of our God. These three things we're going to go over in detail next week, but just let me give you the preview. You were washed. Remember in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and He's just to forgive us. And one other thing He does besides forgive. What's that other thing? Kind of cool. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You talk about cleaning, deep cleaning, spiritual deep clean, washing. When you ask the Lord, how many of you have confessed to the Lord your sins and said, Lord, forgive me? I'm only going over it because I know it's like preaching to the choir here. But of course, I hope you all do. Lord, forgive me my sin. When you do that, he says you're forgiven. But you're not only forgiven, you are washed. You are cleansed with the best cleanser there is. The blood of, the, of our Lord. It says, you remember the old hymn, What can wash away my sin? What's the answer? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? What is it? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right? That blood washes us clean. Paul says to them, you guys were the sinners. You were the sinner club. But now, you're the washed sinners. You've been washed of that sin. Cleansed. Not only have you been cleansed, there's two other things he said that happens to you. And these are the things we're going to go in detail over next week. But just to give you a preview, you were sanctified, We'll go over what that means next week. And you are justified. 
just for a quick for helping the young ones. I tell them this if they don't know what justification means, justified is just as if I'd never what sinned. When Jesus takes you from that place where you were a fornicator, you were a swindler, you were a bad person, and he justifies you. He makes you just in the sight of God. He makes you right. He makes you just as if you've never sinned. That's the only thing that will make you right with God is the work of Christ. It's not our work. By the way, we don't justify ourselves. You try to justify yourself, good luck. <laughs> right? Does that work out good in the Bible? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That, that, that's ridiculous. But, Paul says, but, but, this is one of the best buts in the whole Bible. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified. <laughs> you made just as if you never sinned. How, how many likes this idea that even though we were those things, look what Christ did for us. He made it so that's not how we are now. Does the church need to be reminded of this? I mean, you think, what, why did this letter get included in the, in the Holy Scripture? You think maybe, like, this ever affects any, you know, could this apply to any churches today? Yeah. Got a few problems, a few folks that are <coughs> suing each other, a few folks are living immorally in the church. Yeah. And we forget, that's how we were, but now... Christ has worked in us. And he's made us to be new vessels, new creatures, the Bible says. The old things have, what? Passed away. And behold, he makes all things new. One of the coolest things about being truly a believer in the Lord is that the Lord says, let me wash away that past. Let me free you. Because so many people are stuck. Not able, they're paralyzed. They can't move forward because of their past. They're like, Pastor, you just don't understand what I've gone through. You don't understand where I'm coming from. I'm like, dude, you don't understand where I came from. If God could free me from where I was, you're nothing, man. You got it made. Like you're talking, you got like a couple threads tying you down. I had chains, steel fetters, you know, like major bondages. And God said, let me break those. Let me set you free. And if he can set me free, the Bible says, he who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Christ came to set us free. But we need to let people know that this is available. And we need to be real and not say, well, we never had any of those problems. He says right here in the book, Paul says, some of you were those very ones that did those things. You know, we might get to heaven someday and meet some guys from the church at Corinth. And you might be thinking, oh, right, man, I'm going to meet one of the guys they wrote about in the Bible. And then you go up and find out he's the dude that was the immoral dude that they put out of the church. Are you going to go, ooh, get away, cooties? <laughs> he says some of you were adulterers or some were fornicators. or some. You meet one of the, yeah, I was the fornicator. I could just see it. We get to heaven the I was, was past tense, but now I'm washed. Now I'm sanctified. Now I'm justified, just as if I'd never sinned. Made new, clean. See, if we don't stick to the message of the gospel, that Christ can take us from whatever background we were in, whatever sin we were in, and that's what we were, but now we're new creatures. Now we've been placed in a world just like this little church was placed in Corinth. They were a light to a dark place. They're like a, a lifeboat in a tumultuous dark sea. Now there's no problem with being a lifeboat, a rescue boat in the, in the storm. People are looking for a, a way out. The only problem, by the way, and I've said this before, is not that the lifeboat is in the, in the water. Do you, you all know that Christians, we are made as vessels for God to use to help save others? We are like those rescue boats. 
And there's no problem with taking a boat and put it in the water. Just look out there. See, I, I arranged for some visual aids for you. <laughs> Convenient. See that boat right there, the aggressor? There's no problem with it sitting in the water. Boats are designed to be in the water. Christians are designed to be in this world. No problem with you being in this world. What's the problem for that boat out there? What, what, what could cause any trouble for that boat? It's made to be in the water. Except if too much of the water gets into the boat. And the same goes for you as a Christian. You are made to be in this world, but you're not made to have the world be in you. You get too much of this world in you, and you're going to sink just like that boat would sink. You were designed to be in this world by God as a lifeboat to help others. You're, they will look at you and go, look, they're floating. I'm not. Help. And you're supposed to be there throwing out the, you know, the little ring. To save them. Drag them to the boat. Get them in. That's what we have as Christians that Paul is trying to tell the church at Corinth they forgot. They let, the, they let the world get into the boat. They let the world get into their church. And they forgot. Paul goes, that's a shame. You don't need the world in the church. You know, there's nothing worse than going to a church where they're like literally imitating the world. I, I don't know about you, but I, I like go, ah. it's It's not appealing. We have to be the ones that are different. We're washed. We're cleaned. We're sanctified. We're justified. People should be able to say, wow, look at their boat doesn't have any water in it. Because if we really want to let them know the sweetness of walking with the Lord, is that we don't have to have that stuff weighing us down. We don't have to have that stuff pulling us. We are free from that because of what Christ did. Next week, let's pick up with that those three things, washed, sanctified, justified. Got a little bit more to tell because there's some little bit deeper understandings that might help bring it out before we go into the rest of the chapter. If you got a chance, do me a favor, read to the end of the chapter. See where Paul's going with this. It might help you, you know, get some perspective. And, uh, and you know, I don't surprise you with where I'm going to be teaching from next. I just try to bring out the parts as we go through so it help you you know, deepen your understanding of, of, of God's Word. It's so sweet to me. I love it. The more I hear and the more depth, you know, it's like you hear another preacher preach the same passage you heard before, but he brings out another layer, you know, like it's like different layers of the onion, you know, a little deeper and a little, or another aspect you did. Oh, yeah. It, it, isn't it sweet sometimes when we hear a, a, a really good sermon on a part of what we went, I read that before. I didn't even notice that. You know, and it just... It just like strengthens you inside. Well, let's pray that all of us could hear what we needed to hear today. Like Jesus would always say at the end, let them that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says. Lord God, may we be those people that hear with that spiritual ear that you've get granted to each of us that, that we could hear what you, you wanted and intended for us to hear today. Help us hear your Spirit speak to us. So we would know how to behave. So we could be those ones that you've placed, Lord, as you, you, you said we're to be like a lamp that's not hidden underneath the, the peck measure, but, but put on a lampstand to shine, to light the whole way, the whole room, Lord. Let our lights shine, Lord, with the brightness of your sun. And Lord, forgive us our sins. Forgive us our foolishness and Help us, Lord, to walk in a manner that pleases you. I just ask that for each person here as we go this day, Lord. Make us all clean, refreshed, washed, Lord. Wash us all clean. In Christ's name I ask. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? We'll sing a closing song. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com Mahalo and God bless.